Hello and welcome to the WHS Journal Public Affairs Program. I'm Jerry Williams. Well, the Reverend Dr. Michael David Bailey is co-pastor of the First Cathedral in Bloomfield, and he wears many hats. He was live in our studio recently, and today and tomorrow, you'll hear a re-airing of that conversation happening now on the WHS Journal. It's news and public affairs. The Reverend Dr. Michael David Bailey currently serves as chaplain for the Hartford Police Department, the Board of Trustees for the Masters Christian School in Simsbury, and he's also the co-pastor of the First Cathedral in Bloomfield, and he is in the house right now. Good morning, my brother. How are you? Good, sir. How are you? I'm grateful to be alive for another day and to see another year. Hey, same here, same here. And as your dad often say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's because the book says it, the Bible says it. Yes, and we got to be grateful. And you say often, when you woke up this morning, take a deep breath. God did that. Well, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So that's quite significant in my life, and I pray it's significant in yours and many others. The problem is, right, the problem is, again, going back to that, a lot of people take that for granted. Mm -hmm. They take the easy thing of breathing for granted and they don't give God thanks like they should, and it's a problem. It's yeah. a problem. I think we have uh, basically misused our breath. We use it for other things, and instead of glorifying God, you know, we do other things, so. Yeah. Yeah, try to give a little bit of a reminder. Take a deep breath, and and you do that well often because in Him we live, move, and have our being. We're breathing His air. <laughs> well, more importantly, I think of people like you, people who have a testimony, mm -hmm. and so a lot of times we need to sit back and reflect. Um, a lot of things that we do not do, well, or we do not do enough, is we don't think enough about where we came from. I know we try to reject that and say that's a bad thing, but that's not a bad thing. It's a means of reflection. And once you have that reflection, that ought to put you in a posture of thankfulness. Right. Being very thankful for what the Lord has done. Yeah. A lot of people around the world didn't wake up to see this new day, but you did. Absolutely. I did. And the people Absolutely. who are listening. Absolutely. And I'm thankful about it. I'll never forget. I heard somebody. I'm not going to use the uh, expletive deletive that the person used on here. Sorry, <laughs> y'all. I sound probably a little bit crazy. Uh, but they said every time that they get up in the morning, they want the devil to say, dang. We'll say dang, right? Dang, he's up he's again. He's up again. Or, yeah. or she's up again. That's that's how it ought to be. Wow. Wow. He, yeah. This person's up again glorifying God. Right. We ought to be uh, terrorists of the devil, right? Terrorists mm. to the devil. There mm. you go. That's you know, causing the devil to know that Jesus still reigns and we believe That's right. it and he will not get us to doubt about Jesus. Amen. So you serve on the executive board of the Greater Hartford Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance and you're also the chaplain of the Hartford uh, Police Department. What is that like uh, being the chaplain of HPD? What does that entail? So I served on the IMA and it's a great organization. I still pseudo serve if I can put that like that I still help out um, great organization let me start off with that one of the things that's important about it they are people who come from many or vast denominations and they come together to do justice work justice for the kingdom but also justice for the people and that's significant one of the things I rave about the IMA is uh, they're actually going to be having a uh, Martin Luther King service it's an annual service in Hartford you've been to one of those mm -hmm. I believe and uh, one of the things that they try Try to do is celebrate the significance of Jesus and justice. That is soon coming, um, and I can get you the date in the next few moments. You know, I have the technology, the technology mm -hmm. to say, "Hey, what's the date?" And, you know, ask somebody about it. But also. For the Hartford Police Department, man, it's a spiritual support for the police. They need it. They need it. And one of the things, if you want to know that, I do do. Obviously, it's, a, it's about a group of seven of us that are chaplains. What we do, we meet once a month, but we also get into the cars with the cops. And do ride-alongs. We do ride-alongs. Wow. Now, if I told you, I'm probably going to make people a little, uh, if, if the church members are, you know, listening right now, I'm probably going to make them a little crazy right now is that is that okay to have your permission to do so i generally like to go at nights wow so the reason being is because i like the action 
action is key for me. I'm one of those guys. I have to be in it. And so we'll get out with the officers. We'll go to the crime scenes. And sometimes, you know, if whatever the assistance they need as far as with the situation, we're actually called into duty. But we're there for the police to make sure that they have a support. And we're also there with when it comes down to the police, you know. We're like... Um, what you would call their counselors. So what they would do is like pour our, their hearts out to us and tell us really what's going on with them. And we get the opportunity to minister to them about their lives, which is quite significant. And also we are what we would call a safeguard, a safeguard between the community and the police. So a lot of times when the police is like the adrenaline is high and they feel a certain way, sometimes, you know, not everybody has a good day every day. And so it, it's a steady reminder when you have a chaplain in the car um, that I have to be cognizant of what's going on. I have to be aware. And so it brings a type of awareness as far as like, how do I treat my fellow neighbor? And you go back to the scriptures. I, I think about this sometimes. John 13, 34, 35, we quoted a lot, uh, especially talking about love, how we would be known as disciples by the love that we show to one another. Right. So that emphasis of Christ's love begins to to uh, basically take over that ride along. And we have opportunity not only to be ones that are, you know, speakers of love, right? Talking about love, but we're also ones that get to exhibit that love with the officer. We also do great things with them, you know, like we sit down, we eat with them. Um, we'll go have lunch, coffee. Uh, also, there's times where we would go back in and donate, you know, like food to the cops because a lot of times, you know, they don't eat their just constantly at work. But we want them to know that not everybody's anti-police. That's the problem. People want to say, be anti-police. That message has been going on for years. And you remember, and I'm not going to go into it because it's Christian radio and you're looking at me. <laughs> and you're from <laughs> Oakland. So you know what I'm talking about. So from the Bay, for those young folks, you remember a certain group yes. <laughs> that had a certain song. Yes. But that kind of concept, you know, with the police is, is just negative. You need police. But the whole thing about it is you need good police. And there are good police officers. And we have to stop letting the one bad apple spoil the whole bunch and mess up our concept about the police. Police are not bad. And so that's a little bit about what we do. And I think it's probably one of the most fun things I do. Um, I'm on a number. You already got that bio there. And I don't want to look at that bio. That bio is <laughs> probably going to tell on me about a lot of stuff. People <laughs> ask what I do. And sometimes... Sometimes I don't like to give out my bio. Now, this is the yeah. reason why, because you see I'm on 10 plus boards. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you wear many hats, brother. <laughs> and so sometimes people are concerned about me, yes. even though I'm younger. But like, when does this guy rest? And he right. has two young kids, a wife. Right. And, you know, I, I do spend time with my family. I love my family to death. Um, especially, I was telling my wife yesterday, I have a five-year-old. And next week, my baby baby will be nine months. And so Ava Joy, Shiloh Grace. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Shout out to my wife, Sonia. Sonia. Sonia I'm going to put a whole name out here. Sonia yeah. Marilyn Peters Bailey. That's what we tell her. She gets mad about that. <laughs> well, I love you anyway. But here we go. <laughs> here it is. So when it comes down to uh, my daughter, Ava Joy, she's like a magnet to Sonia. And it's so amazing to me. It's, it's wonderful. But the funny thing about it, she has my personality. Mm. So you know how that goes. This is a little yeah, higher yeah, than yeah. Now, my baby baby seems to have my wife personality and when I step into the room I'm overjoyed that she you know wants her dad but I get scared sometimes when she gets older I'm like oh what's happening to her this is the one that's going to happen to me but it's a beautiful thing all that to say even when it comes down to police to everything that I do I want my kids and my wife you know I, I want to be able to set up a legacy and a legacy I believe is being built now but not only just a legacy you know to for my for my own but also a spiritual legacy that they see you know it's okay to get involved in the community as long as it's God's work it's okay to you know be involved because even I'm going to say something that's probably going to make some people mad you know yes I'm a pastor and I have those responsibilities, but sometimes we have to be careful that the church does not overpower your family. Mm. That the church does not even become to the point where it becomes, I don't want to use a bad word, but cultic. 
um, sometimes or idolatrous. You know what I mean? So we have to be very, very careful and making sure that it's family, right? Then the ministry, family and this. So that's why I stay away from that bio, right? <laughs> all that to say, I know y'all like this guy talks a lot, but all that, that's why. <laughs> but uniquely, it, it's okay, but we should be more well-rounded, more balanced. Yeah. And I want my children to be balanced. And I want them to have the right concept and be critical thinkers about everything that they get involved in. And you just heard my conversation with Reverend Dr. Michael David Bailey, co-pastor of the First Cathedral. Join me tomorrow at this same time for part two. If you would like more information about what you heard today, call WHS 860 346 1049. 860 346 1049. The WHS Journal, it's news and public affairs.